Now, I'm going to the town fly the call the Burley. Now, the Burley is a, it's a slight, I mean, it's very green rose like. Uh, I'm tying this on a, an unusual hook, actually. Uh, normally, you tie it on a, a standard wet fly hook, but this is a short shank special, size 10. Uh, the shank is equivalent to size 12. It gets a bit bigger, uh, equivalent to size 10. Now, it's a nice enough flyer. I thought I'd show you how to tie it. Now, you, as I say, you don't need to use this hook, it's up to yourself, but when you like. Now, there's a couple of versions of it. This is the, the version I know. Uh, it's fished in Loch Leven, so uh, I'm just going to tie it. It's quite simple. I'm using a yellow thread, a uni thread in this case, 8 0. Just going to make sure there's wax on the thread. We start with the eye of the hook, just make sure the device is tight before we start. And then wind down. As I say, it's an unusual hook to tie on, so it's getting the style right, it's a bit... Okay, so I'm going to take the thread to the point, just basically just before it goes round the bend. Now I'm going to use a cock cape, which is unusual for a wet fly, but uh, it does work. This is a, an indie neck, uh, cock neck. It's a, it's a light, it's a ginger. Pale or pale ginger, and I'm going to use one of the larger feathers for the tail fibres, and obviously one of the smaller ones for, for the throat. Now, remove the fluff from the bottom. Just bring the, these are, let's say, the large hackle, and we bring the tips out so they're lined up. Don't be shy with the tail fibres. Then, basically, looking at the, at least I would say. Full length of the, I would say the hook for the tail. Come in, make sure it's secure. A couple of turns. Trim out the length of the body, which is a couple of mil from the eye. Now the rib I'm using is a number twenty-seven. This one's from Vineyards. You could use a, a small if it's uni or any other. Probably be smaller by ideal. Then when you catch this in the full length of the body. Obviously you've got to balance it. Plenty of wax on the thread. And then just take your time working your way up. Now you'll see the colour of the thread changing with the, because of the colour of the, the cut fibres for the tail, which is ideal. This point here. You can see the colour. They're showing through. Now I'm going to taper it a wee bit more by coming down about two thirds of the way. And make sure you wax your thread. That point there. And then come back up. This will give you a slight taper using the thread. Now bring the rib up, a straight turn at the back. Looking round about five turns. Come straight up, follow it with the thread, put a 90 degree bend into the wire. And then secure it down. Bring the thread to the point where you want to tie in the hackle. Best to bend and break away the wire. So we quite like to see how that's sitting. But you can see the colour. That's what you're looking for. This dirty colour, the uh, dirty yellow. So see, I'm going to use one of the cock hackles for the, which is unusual as I say for a wet fly, but you can get away with it, especially with these, because down the end here, these are this is quite soft. It's got a nice colour. Which I'm looking for to go with the fluff. Now the front of the face, the hackle is facing myself. Come in two or three turns, make sure it's secure. Cut away or bend away the hackle. Now they fold the fibres towards the back. Front of the hackle is facing towards the eye. Now I'm looking round about. I would say probably three turns with this, as with this hackle. Depends on the quality. That's fine. Basically just into the about two and a half turns or so. Catch it in with your thread. Make sure it's secure. Nice and tight. Don't worry about anything at this point. Just trim away the hackle. These fibres, we can simply just draw them back. Hold them back with the turns of thread. Ready for tying in your wing. You see that? Nice natural look to it. So it's a very midge like colour uh, and it works extremely well. Now we're going to be doing the wing. Now I've got 
some this is teal primary fair as a teal wing is like this there's a teal wing and uh, basically it means the right and the left so take a slip from either side and you can use blue color from that you could use mallard you could use starling if you want it's up to yourself but in this size of fly I could get away with using the, the teal uh, we've got to say a right or left slip it's lining up the ends here looking towards the back of the hook fold them down either side of the wing uh, the hackle sorry just on the top here and then a nice pinching loop slide allow the fibres to or the sorry the thread to slip through your fingers just see how the wings sit slightly up now it's, you can always go back I mean now I usually do go back uh, first crease is usually gets the wing to sit a wee bit better sometimes it's just a wee bit long get a wee bit lower just take your time get the wing to sit the way you want it's fine, I'm just going to now trim away the waist nice and tight a wee bit of wax on my thread I usually like to take the thread into the cut ends here so that they're basically slightly folded back tidy the head area up and then we'll see how the wing's sitting Go in the wet finish Trim away the thread Fold a wee bit here so it sits That looks a wee bit better Now we're ready to varnish the head See the wing's sitting Yeah, we've been twisting my side, but your side's fine. But that's okay. Come in with the varnish. Now a couple of coats of varnish. Go all the way around. That actually looks not too bad on this short shank. It's a nice style. It's, it's quite sometimes hard when you've got a sort of weird shape of your hook to get a balance in the fly. But I think that looks not too bad. Seems to sit okay. Then you go. That's the burly, or the burly olive, whatever you like to call it. So hope you enjoyed that.